This is Peebs Gilder coming to you live from Chicago, Illinois, with a special report. We've just received word that the cult cinema podcast B-Movie Mania has released a new t-shirt design that is currently for sale on their website, bmoviemania.com. The new shirt features all four of the self-proclaimed maniacs as cartoons, along with UFOs, the Chicago skyline, and some dope-ass lettering. The t-shirt was designed by artist Johnny K, and early reports indicate that the material is super soft, and the shirt is available in a wide variety of colors. It also comes in styles suitable for all genders. Oh, okay, all right. Okay, I'm being told right now that you can order your own B-Movie Mania t-shirt by visiting store.bmoviemania.com or simply by going to bmoviemania.com. Reporting live from Chicago, this is Peebs Gilder, BMM News. This is the future. The podcast as we know it is gone. Only four radical maniacs remain standing after the podcast lips. Pod cast a lip up Whatever. Only four radical maniacs remain standing. And now these four heroes prepare to discuss Turbo Kid on B Movie Mania! Welcome to the crossroads of camp, the bastion of the bizarre, the place where low budgets meet high praise. Yes, it's B Movie Mania! And now, B Movie Maniacs, here are your hosts, the cream of the crap, the connoisseurs of cult, your cinematic creepy uncles, Paul Brooks. Mike Hayes, Jason Hulls, and Crazy Chris Hudson. <laughs> I'm trying to. How do you do the sound of cards in your spokes with your mouth? <laughs> 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 it's, I sound really creepy doing that. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and hello, if we can get around the noise, I'd like to introduce the crew and welcome everyone to B-Movie Mania. I am, well, probably your least favorite B-Movie Maniac compared to my K's. Uh, Chris Hudson, as always, I am here. <laughs> and with me is Jason Holes. I'm a robot. <laughs> and my K's, who I assume is not a robot. No, I am a robot. Oh, shit. Paul Brooks, are you a robot? It's the power you feel when you get your taste of the glory. <laughs> Wait, was that your quick take? <laughs> so, so no, the answer is no. Oh, all right, thanks. And no, that was not my quick take. Is that similar to proof that you have a real working heart? Is that right, Paul? Uh, yeah, I think so, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's cool. That's good. I'm, I'm glad at least one of us has a real working heart. My head is actually duct taped onto my body. Oh, but our, yeah. <laughs> our listeners are probably wondering what the hell we're talking about, uh, unless they read the title before they started listening to the podcast. <laughs> Which they probably <laughs> did. And, and you said it know, before the intro, too. You know, I think our fans at this point are so into what we do, and they're so loyal to us, they don't even need to look at the episode titles or the movies to know that this is going to be quality. All right. Well, then, in that case, uh, this is to you, our most dedicated listener, we watched Turbo Kid. When was it made? I thought, you know, I've got notes and I totally forgot to write down what year it was. 2016 from. it came out. 1997? 2015. 2015. 15. Sorry. It says it takes place in 1997, so it's kind of an alternate Earth, I guess. In the post-apocalypse caused by acid rain. <laughs> Which was a big problem in the 80s, if uh, you're one of our younger listeners who don't know what acid <laughs> rain is. Written and directed by Francois Simard. I hope I am. There's no way I'm going to pronounce these correctly. 
Um, Anouk Whistle. Sounded pretty good. <laughs> so Francois Samard, Anouk Whistle, and Jan Carl Whistle. Um, and starring Monroe Chambers, Lawrence LeBeouf, and everyone's favorite B-movie villain, Michael Ironside. Oh, yeah. I guess A-list villain, too. He's been in some good shit. And I probably you could say everyone's favorite LeBeouf, too, because there's not many of them, and there's I much many. prefer this one over the other one. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. You don't see too many movies. You, you see a couple movies that are directed by two people. I don't know if I've ever seen a movie that's legitimately directed by three people. Much unless you're talking about the new Queen movie. Oh. Well, well, did the, did the but that's a whole different ball. Yeah, game. but did the three directors also write the Queen movie? Because they sure did on this one. No, they did not. Well, this may be a first. Yeah, this ever. trio has been working together prior to this movie for like ten years doing short films, and oh, nice. uh, and in fact, this or the original short that this movie's based on was actually a submission to the ABCs of Death contest for the letter T. Huh. Huh. Yeah. So uh, well, what do you know? What, Mike, what, what is T for? T is, oh, T is for Turbo, oh. is what it, what it would have been. It did not make it into the original film, but the producers of ABCs of Death liked it so much that they actually produced Turbo Kid. That makes sense because it doesn't really seem to fit the the style of ABCs of Death, really. It's not like, a, it's not a horrific movie in, in the sense of what some of the other stuff in in that anthology yeah. is, well, right? Well, did you see the short film, the original short? I didn't get around to it, no. Oh, okay. It, it's it's a bit different. There's uh, some similar characters in it. It's five minutes long. But uh, let, let's let say that there is death in it and and uh, maybe no one comes out alive. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> that was the most surprising thing about the short for me. Can we yeah, agree? Can we uh, post a link to that? Oh, yeah, we totally Oh, yeah. Well, I bet you we posted it before they even we put this up, maybe, through a little... Uh, Throwback Thursday ahead of time so people can watch the short before the movie if they want. Very nice. You know, I'm going to give that some clinkies, Mike. Thank you. <laughs> Great. So, hey, so anyway, so um, let's do a quick description real quick before we do our quick takes. Uh, so Wikipedia, I'm pulling this, the description from crowdsourced sources this time. So, yeah, the, uh, the film follows the adventures of The Kid, a teenage boy turned superhero in the Wastelands, an alternate 1997 Earth where water is scarce. He teams up with a mysterious girl named Apple and an arm-wrestling cowboy named Frederick to stop the tyrannical warlord Zeus. I will destroy you with my Turbo Glove, the ultimate weapon against the robot threat. But to be a true hero, you'll have to save your girlfriend. Hey, what's that in your head? It's a, it's, it's a comic book. What's it about? It's about a Turbo Rider. <gasps> <laughs> so hey, quick takes. Quick takes. All right, Paul. Let's hear your quick take. I'm gonna go reverse. It's the power you style. feel when you get <laughs> your it. taste of the glory. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> oh shit. I mean, what else are you gonna do? You know. Yeah, <laughs> fair. Uh, Mike. Oh God. My quick take is: What are you doing? What, listener? What are you doing? Stop. Stop listening. To un- stop this podcast right now and just listen to the soundtrack to this fucking movie. <laughs> oh, yeah. Fuck this podcast. Just listen to the mo- the soundtrack. That's all you need. You know what we could do is, uh, you know how on a, on a talking cat, Jay insisted that we play the background music <laughs> under the whole thing. We could just put the power of the glory underneath this whole episode. It would be so Man. weird because there's so much of us, but we're not hearing it while we're talking. So well, we won't be talking in the right kind of mood. <laughs> <laughs> well, we could try. No, I- I'm editing this, and, and that's not happening. <laughs> Let's do our quick takes. Quick takes. What do you do with the power of the quick takes? <laughs> Jay, what's your quick take? Turbo Kid strikes hard, it strikes fast, and it shows no mercy. Oh, wow. And Skeletron is awesome. <laughs> yeah sounds like uh, something you'd see on the back of the box yeah it very well could be also it could be something that you hear in the karate kid yeah oh yeah oh. but i think that you know that would actually be on the back of the box to the karate kid under a picture of skeletron i think yeah. skeletron well, was in the think... karate kid he probably was he was he's one of the cobra kai guys <laughs> he looks like he was yeah so so they had to have just you know been th- like trying to come up with names for the bad guys and they're like, well, who are some bad guys from the 80s? You got Skeletor, you got Megatron, and they just mash that together, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yep. They made them fuck and this is what they got. And Skeletron, Skeletron was human, right? Like, 
Yeah. Yeah. He was yeah. very human because of his death. He had way more than 10 gallons of blood in his body. <laughs> he, had, yeah. he had all the water of the wasteland sucked up into his body. <laughs> uh, well, what about you, Hudson? What, what's your quick take? Yeah, what's your quick take, Chris? <laughs> My quick take? Well, I don't remember all the words, but... <laughs> you can't do that. That's mine. I did it twice already. <laughs> hey, but you, you remembered the words, Paul. Obviously, we all loved the soundtrack. Yeah, this thing this, is ridiculous. The, this, the music was amazing. I love the music, yeah. and I, I really wish I'd listened to it more closely. It, it, the music fit perfectly for that 80s vibe, but not just the music, but pretty much everything like was a great yeah. homage to the era of movies. The production design, I think, is fantastic through the whole movie. Oh, yeah. It, it's like yeah. it peppers in these, like... Like really well thought out production design, but with also like gags. Like everybody in the movie rides bikes. Everybody. <laughs> like there's yeah. not a vehicle to be found. Everyone's riding bikes. So that's kind of it just that it's kind of funny. But as you're watching the movie, you just kind of like get into that, and it's still funny. But you just kind of accept it and move on. And, you know. And not just and and what I loved about it, not just bikes, but like those BMX bikes that were really huge that everyone rode in the 80s. Yeah. 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 Uh, not so, surprising. <laughs> Not surprising that the, the makers of this film cite BMX bandits as, as like the biggest influence in this movie. Not just not just the bi BMX bikes, not just the fact that they got the same model of BMX for the man guy, but because they also d constructed the color, like the color of the film influenced by BMX bandits. That makes That's sense. Awesome. That's cool. Yeah. I like the, I, this is going to sound maybe we're treading toward film nerddom, but I, I really like the use of the color yellow. I, it was <laughs> on a, a podcast, Chris. You're gonna get nerdy about a movie. Well, yeah, that's true. I guess that's what we I called you, Chris. But, I'm sorry. Yeah, like the use of the <laughs> color <laughs> yellow used. was really, I thought, interesting. Like, I just popped out a lot, and um, <laughs> yeah, I was just really impressed with the look of the movie. Yeah, it was be beautifully shot. But before we get too 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 much further into the into the discussion, I just want to kind of give a quick little overview of the plot. So. Viewers have a little little frame of viewers like they're they're watching a podcast. Ha 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 ha! It might be. <laughs> you could say, if, "Can I give it a shot, Chris? Can I give a, a real succinct description of the plot?" You do, you do it, Mike. Go for it. Look at it's it's Mad Max on BMX bikes, uh, except there's a lot more scavenging and a lot more blood. <laughs> oh God, the blood! <laughs> so much blood. The end. I mean, <laughs> that's maybe just a general feel of the movie, but uh, you do yours. Yeah, what's here, Chris? Oh no, that's that's all I got. You got you had it. That's exactly what I was going to say, Mike. Well, like the kid, <laughs> the kids running away. Like there's a turbo kid, and he's running. He meets a new friend. He's running away from the bad guys. He keeps scavenging. The bad guys keep finding him. Keeps having to fight the bad guys, and then at some point, someone wins. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, you've got a little bit of a turbo glove sort of uh, '80s power glove sort of thing that explodes people, and uh, the villain who. Uh, who turns people into water that people drink in the wasteland. That was a pretty so, cool little bit, like, too. <laughs> <laughs> he has so a I, machine that he crushes people in and extracts the water <laughs> out of their bodies and then sells it to people. You like science? I absolutely love it. For example, do you know how much water there is in the average human body? Your blood is 83% water. Your muscle tissue is 75%. The gristle and cartilage around your bones, 55%. Bones themselves, 25%. And your noggin up here, the old gray matter, is 90% water. Which brings the grand total to 10 precious gallons of H2O. 10 gallons which this machine is designed to extract. <laughs> I mean, Turbo Kid is just as much water as Skeletron, who apparently yeah. had like fifty. Thought he had looked like he had fifty <laughs> gallons, but God, Skeletron was so fucking good. Can someone so, describe? I can't bring it to words. Can someone he's, do it? He's like Skeletron is like one of those like Day of the Dead masks, but it's made of steel, and then he's got like these crazy, like a black blowout behind the mask. I thought it was his hair. It, it, it kind of looks great. like hair. It yeah. looks like hair. It yeah. might have been, but it was just... I think it's the tufts of his hair, yeah, just coming out. Because he had a big leather band in the back. It, it just looks so great. Like, 80s, awesome. 
And and he's got a gigantic buzzsaw on, <laughs> on his arm. Yeah. That, I mean, he uses that thing through the whole movie. He's shooting buzzsaws. <laughs> he's cutting people up with this thing. I think an important part of his look are the uh, the, the football shoulder pads he wears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And also, the let's not undersell the mannerisms, too. Like, he oh, has God. great mannerisms. <laughs> like, no matter what's going on, he acts super excited, and his movements are, are super, <laughs> like, jagged and, and excited, but he doesn't ever say anything or make a peep. Never says anything. You know, I want to say, though, the only way he could look more 80s is if he had a halter top on under his <laughs> shoulder pads. Maybe like a fanny pack made of skin. <laughs> yeah, <it's> probably, it's, <laughs> that is probably the only missed opportunity in this movie. <laughs> hey, you know, there's supposed to be a turtle kid, too. I guess Skeletron's <laughs> dead, but, yeah. you know, is he, though? <laughs> well, maybe not. He'll just be like, he'll, <laughs> he'll just be like a wagon of intestines with buzz saws around it. <laughs> there was, I've never seen so many intestines in another movie. Oh, God, this movie it. just rocked on just ripping intestines out of people's bodies. Oh, yeah. There are, is an equivalent percentage of violent parts in this movie as there is water in the human body. <laughs> <laughs> 50 gallons. I was a little nervous uh, going into this, kind of in the same way, actually, that I was a little nervous going into... Um, when I started watching Stranger Things, because I'm like, okay, 80s homage, you know, that's yeah. fine, but how are they going to handle it? But what I thought was interesting, you know, we're talking about all this blood and everything. It wasn't just a a direct homage. They put sort of that more modern twist on it. Um, mm-hmm. And I thought the the combination of those two, the uh, like Jay mentioned, you know, the yellows and the, the color palette and everything sort of mixed with like, you know, there's definitely a lot of CG in the movie or a decent amount, and there's a lot of gore, and the sort of marriage of those two things actually worked better than than it should have, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah the it other, really did. The other movie that kind of straddles that line, in my opinion, is uh, Hobo with a Shotgun. Oh, yeah. uh, yes. Yeah, 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 that does it well. Um, well, speaking of the gore in this movie, there's these guys called the Blood Brothers that the, the directors know, and uh, these these blood brothers built a special rig apparently to do the blood for this film, so it could it was all pressurized and it would just do all all, all the blood for them, and it was you could control it in such a way, in such a, a perfect way that they didn't even have to use squibs for the bullet shots. They could use this rig and hook up the the tubes that way to do fucking bullet shots. I've heard of, squib, of doing which that. Which is insane. I, I've heard of doing that, and I think we actually tried it. Uh, many years ago, and it just it did not work the same as it should have. <laughs> yeah, it was not as successful as it should have. Need the Blood Brothers. <laughs> yeah, these Blood Brothers also apparently built something they call a gore cannon. Which, having seen the movie, I imagine I can see the after effect of it because there is blood and gore just all over this fucking thing. The torso getting stuck on the other guy's head. <laughs> oh yeah, that was a gag from the uh, from the original short. They put the. They, was it? They got the torso on the head. Except, I mean, they they cranked it up a bit. Like if in the in the short, it was like maybe a eight or nine on the violent scale, and in this movie, they cranked it up to like an eleven. <laughs> so they got the guy's torso torso on. They cut a guy in half. The guy's torso is on one other villain, and then the guy's legs are on another villain, and everything's still <laughs> kicking and moving. <laughs> it's just completely absurd. That was toward the end of the movie, so they're just like, whatever. Yeah. Let's just <laughs> it just went let's just go for shit. it. <laughs> Yeah, you know, you're talking about the end of the movie right there. If I if I have a piece of criticism, I think that that might be one of the things is that the amount of gore it doesn't keep getting ratcheted up. It's 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 pretty much you know cranked up to ten from the first fight to the last fight. And for me, by the by the end of it, I did start to it's it started to lose its effect just a little bit because mm. of that. I think. Yeah, I can see that. Well, let's back up. Let's back up just a little bit first, because throughout the beginning part of the movie, Turbo Kid, um, he's reading this this comic book called Turbo Rider. Yeah, and it's about this event. This guy who's got a big power glove and helmet and blah blah blah, whatever. And he actually finds the real Turbo Rider. Yeah, I didn't understand that at all. Can somebody please explain? That? <laughs> See, I, I thought that that was just a. I thought he just made himself into a Turbo Rider like character because he found no. this particular weapon. Was that supposed to be the Turbo Rider? Yes. I think so, yeah. That is Turbo Rider. 
Uh, what happened is the world, this is post-apocalyptic, and what happened is robots destroyed the world. That's what happened in this universe. So as we start interacting with robots throughout the story, that's why it's such like a, a crazy thing when you find out someone's a robot, because they're evil, usually, which at some point... We'll get into the character Apple, but when he finds out she's a robot, she, he's freaked out. And then she says, aren't you evil? And she says, that it depends on the model. And like, it's a whole thing of that's what happened. So when he, when he falls in the bunker, like you were saying, Jay, and he finds the turbo rider, there's a screen with like a kernel, an old military message playing. And he's like, we got to give all these robots what we've got left and we got to save humanity and all this kind of stuff. And he's supposed to be some sort of superhero that has become a legend he was technically a turbo rider, and then he took his donned his armor and stuff like that, and his cool so, power glove. So you're saying that because of that, after the apocalypse, then somebody made a comic book based on the real turbo rider. So that seems a little far fetched, right? As I was saying, it. <laughs> I'm guessing maybe, pre-apocalypse. Right. Well, there there is a John McCain comic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. maybe so. there are multiple turbo riders or something like that, right? And. And so they made comics about them, like the the military does now, right? Like, they like sponsor John video games, they sponsor all that kind of shit, <laughs> like to, for uh, like John McCain does. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> I have the John McCain Turbo comic. writer, John McCain. It, it's not. I would say, in, in it seems far fetched, but it is absolutely what happens in our reality in terms of the military using propaganda to influence the young. Oh, so you Turbo know. Kid got sucker, sucked into some propaganda. <laughs> yeah, I, he did. I mean, right, it, I don't think it's as nefarious as that, but it, it's not, <laughs> it happens in today's world, so. I'm not saying that I necessarily minded it. It was just the only part of the movie where I'm like, wait, what? Everything yeah. else made sense, but then he finds like a real life superhero who's dead, and I'm just like, yeah. Huh, okay. So so we mentioned Apple, and she's kind of the robot sidekick who is a friendship model who hangs out with Turbo Kid now because he's her new friend. Yeah. And uh but, but, her old uh, friend's gone. <laughs> <laughs> and, and 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 we find out she's a robot later on, but there's another uh kind of side ish character that uh comes along I want to talk about. Frederick the arm wrestler. <laughs> oh, yeah. Frederick is awesome. Frederick's pretty great. <laughs> so let's talk about the Cantina and Frederick's introduction in the arm wrestling. <laughs> Are you gonna play nice, Mr. Bird? Huh? Are you gonna play nice? Okay. Okay. Drinks are on you. Yeah! He's an arm wrestler, and he's arm wrestling this dude with, uh, like, a skull built onto his head, like an animal skull, and they're fighting over toasters, so whoever loses gets burned. They're, they're not fighting to win a toaster. They literally no, have no, no. toasters <laughs> right. underneath them. The loser will have his hand burned on a toaster. Yeah. It's like a brand, like a branding, like branding thing. Iron. Like you yeah. lost yeah. to this person, you get their like mark or whatever branded on you. <laughs> which is seems to be, which seems to be a, a running thing because later in the movie, there's another arm wrestling match and they're over blenders. So oh maybe it's about, all about kitchen appliances and in this. fire. Let's talk about that for a moment. <laughs> Blades and fire. So, so after Frederick, after Fre after Frederick's introduction, <laughs> we find out about uh, that his brother has been. Uh, Captured by Zeus, Michael Ironside, who is uh, forced to fight in an arena that will... We'll get to the whole arena thing later on. So Frederick will, goes to try to get his brother back, but he's captured. And here's the other arm wrestling scene with blades and what, Jay? Fire! Blades and fire! <laughs> and there's more. Blades and fire! Ah. <laughs> but it doesn't really work too well. <laughs> <laughs> They've got two blunders, like without the with just the exposed blades and fire shooting out of them for some reason. <laughs> it's completely ridiculous. Well, just for a minute though. Yeah, just for a minute. <laughs> yeah, like the fire shoots out and then the fire fails, and the guy who was supposed to build the arm wrestling apparatus gets choked by Zeus. <laughs> because the fire I mean, doesn't work. I mean, Zeus is really into this fire. Yeah. He, See, he's here's another thing I like it. that Frederick did in this scene. Because as soon as it's clear that, like, the fire isn't spraying out, there's guys all over the place. And, oh, okay. <laughs> like, uh, Frederick just starts punching everybody. <laughs> yeah. He headbutt Skeletron. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> and, the, and, the, and the thing that got me about this part is he, he goes to punch Zeus. 
As Zeus catches his fist, then Skeletron just comes up and chops Frederick's hand off. <laughs> just yeah. right off the bat. All right, Takes hero. away his livelihood He's missing a hand. immediately. Yeah. That's, yeah. It's his arm muscle and hand. This is also uh, probably the best one-liners in the movie right here. And <laughs> you know what? I'll just put in, I'll, I'm just going to put in the whole clip right here because it's, <laughs> it's, it's so the great. sort of thing that you got to really hear all the way through. I think I didn't see that coming? I have eyes everywhere. From where I stand, I only see one. Motherfucker! I'm gonna kill you with my bare hands! Well, from where I stand, I only see one. <laughs> we should also mention that Frederick is dressed like, I mean, Indiana Jones, right? Like, that's who oh, he's dressed yeah. as? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But he, and it's fantastic, like with a New Zealand accent. Yes, it's a little bit of uh, a little bit of Briscoe County Junior thrown in there. Oh, I can see a little <laughs> yeah, Briscoe yeah, Jr. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we really yeah. need to. Uh, I know that we've already backed up twice on this, but I want to <laughs> talk for a substantial part of this about Apple because in my Yo, mind, we she's oh yeah, hundred yeah. percent the star of the show and and really steals this entire movie in my book. Yeah. Well, yeah. what about her, Paul? Well, I think she it's interesting. Is the star that, of the show, and uh, no, we heard that, Jay. I want, I want to do. Ex, I want Wait, to is she really, is she really interesting? Does she steal the show? Well, you know, we don't find out that she's a robot until I don't know, maybe halfway through the film, right? Yeah, she just yeah, seems yeah, like another normal girl in the wasteland. Yeah, Zeus yeah. shoots her, and we find out that yeah. Initially, it comes across like. Maybe her character is going to get really old really fast because she's so excited and so happy about everything. And it's the middle of the goddamn apocalypse. So you're like, <laughs> what is with this girl? Just <laughs> yeah. unbridled enthusiasm for everything. This is so pretty. This is my weapon. This is my gnome stick! Ah! 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 I really like it a lot. Thank you so much. Well, you know instantly that something's wrong because when she does like appear next to the kid, uh, she says goodbye to her old friend who is a, a de <laughs> very decomposed corpse Which, that she's apparently been carrying around. By the way, this might be a good opportunity to mention that there is a short film slash music video on slash prequel slash yeah, pre it's prequel. Apple, it's a Apple prequel about her character and that decomposed skeleton um, on YouTube. It came um, out in September. It's not. What? It's not actually that same guy. <laughs> it's a different guy? I thought it was. Here, yeah, here's I wondered like, that too. Because cause in the prequel, uh, it's, so, it's so well done. It's very good. Um, but she picks up this decomposing corpse of a, a man who she knew when he was alive, but she's been staying with while he's dead. And she picks him up to try to get away from danger. And the <laughs> bottom of his body just stays and the top comes up. <laughs> and so, so throughout the rest of that video, she's carrying around this legless corpse. Just a torso. Yeah, just the torso. But in the movie, yeah. that corpse has legs and it is a different helmet. I thought it was going to be the same. Yeah. So you know, that means... That did cross my mind. I, I noticed the legs. I thought it was a. I thought it was the same helmet, though. But. Yeah, I did too. I went back and checked, and it's not. So that means she has had at least one other person die with her that she's carried around, <laughs> which adds, I think, a lot more to it. I thought it was a little goofy at first, but I'm like, no, wait a minute, that adds a whole other level of insanity to this woman. I mean, yeah, yeah. she's probably been doing this for years. I mean, who yeah. knows how long the apocalypse has been yeah. going on for. Yeah. I think it's I think it's really clever that it's someone different. Everyone should watch the short. It, it, it really oh, is yeah. good. And it's very yeah. in-world. It introduces new places and like new characters, like new factions almost yeah. that exist in the world. It's very cool. <laughs> well, 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 one thing about her happiness is when they're in... So Turbo, she's captured too, eventually. And Turbo Kid goes to rescue her and they're all captured and they've got a fight in this pool. And this is where we find out about the water, the, you know, Zeus is harvesting water from people's bodies and he's putting them in these gladiatorial games, but they, they're about ready to fight and, and Frederick tells Apple to go fight one of the other guys and she takes after it. She's got her gnome stick that <laughs> Turbo Kid made for her earlier. It's just, it's so just, a gar just a garden gnome taped to a, to a log. I go, what is that thing, a dwarf? 
No, that's my gnome stick. Okay, whatever. I want you to swing it as hard as you can at that motherfucker's face, yeah? Sir, yes, sir! No! Ah! Yeah! And she just goes to town beating the shit out of this guy. <laughs> she, like, pulls a Leroy Jenkins, and, oh, like, God. they're making oh, the plans, and she's she like, what? Attack? Okay. And right. just charges after the guy and starts beating on him with the gnome stick. Well, this is, though, the first time that you see Apple die, because she dies a handful of times throughout this movie. Yeah. Uh, and it, I think every time you're like, oh, shit, is she done? Like, I was, at least. I thought, oh, is she out of this movie? And yeah. they're, that like, this sucked. is the... This, they, they kill her right here, and I think like you were saying, Paul, you're like, oh, man, oh, shit, you find out she's a robot, and that's where it starts this weird new journey of the story, the new, like, emotional arc of the story of her and, being a robot and, and what and that's that kind means. Of where, that's kind of where you find out she won't die until her Legend of Zelda heart indicator runs out of hearts. Very 80s. Are, are you okay? I'm fine. Are you sure? Oh, yes. I have 7.5 hearts left. The other uh, major part of this movie that we haven't, I don't think, really touched on just yet is, um, and this is something that so many modern movies, I think, really struggle with, all of these characters are so likable, you know? You just, you want to like all of these characters and you want to see them succeed. Which which kind of put up a little bit of conflict in me because I really liked Apple, I really liked Turbo Kid, I really liked Frederick, but I also really liked Skeletron, and I wanted to <laughs> see everyone succeed. So <laughs> They're fun to like, but there's yeah. very clear distinctions between who you're supposed to be rooting for and who the bad guys are. I mean, there's, there's no yeah. doubt about it. <laughs> you want to see Skeletron chop everyone up? <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> well, he he gets his chance to chop a shitload of people up. He does. <laughs> I mean, it's I, not, I'll say this: I would watch a Skeletron prequel. Was oh, just going to say if the filmmakers are listening, please do a Skeletron prequel. But, but but don't but don't make the mistake of showing us what his life was like before the mask. No, no, we just, want Skeletron <laughs> yeah, full just, mask yeah. and silent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. chopping Either people. Either that up. or or show us. His life as a child, but he's just always had the mask on. <laughs> yeah. He's very excited. He's got a little buzz saw. Yeah. <laughs> little Fisher Price saw before the war. <laughs> so, so leading up to the robots uh, graveyard thing, they talk to uh, they find Begu, who was the proprietor of the arm wrestling slash cantina earlier on. This leads into one of my favorite bits in the movie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> When Skeletron captures Begu and they bring, he brings him to Zeus. Oh God! And, and Zeus knows that he talked to Turbo Kid and, and and Apple. And Zeus really wants that power glove. And so he Which attaches- wait, P.S. Real quick, just so we, I don't think we've actually said what the power glove does. Let me just say, true. Oh, super high powered weapon that when Turbo Kid shoots somebody, they explode into mist. Yeah, pretty. <laughs> so much. that's it. Anyway, that just wanted to paint the say why Zeus wanted this. So weapon. so they've got Begu. And he's sitting in a chair, and Zeus is given a little monologue, and Skeletron is on like a stationary bicycle, <laughs> but they've got a, a, attached to the back wheel of the of the bicycle is like I don't know what like a rope or something tied to Bagu's intestines, <laughs> and they threaten him like, okay, we're gonna wrap up your intestines in this stationary bike unless you tell us we know you you saw the kid and and this robot tell us where they are. I know that you know. Where they are. So I suggest that you start talking <gasps> right <gasps> away. The robot cemetery! They're at the robot cemetery. That's all I know. Well, that was quick. Bagu's like, okay, I want to keep my intestines and just just spills <laughs> the beans immediately. But Zeus is like, Do you know how much this th- you know how much effort this thing took to set up? <laughs> Tell Skeletron to start pedaling. <laughs> Takes the intestines anyway. So more intestines. He's mad the because the yeah. guy flipped too soon and he didn't get to use his torture weapon. <laughs> I'm telling you, they, they must have gotten a steal on fucking intestines. Those <laughs> things are everywhere. Um, Chris, I'm really glad you brought up this scene here because I have a little something I like to call a bike fact. Oh, oh boy. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Ring, ring. Uh, 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 uh. A bike fact. Ring, ring. <laughs> Just so you know, it is common 
on a BMX bike like we have throughout this film to have a smaller back tire. And the reason you would have a smaller back tire on a bike, there's a variety of reasons, but one of them is to help with pedaling. So with a smaller back tire, <laughs> It helps pedaling easier so you can ride up steep inclines or pull in intestines so much more easily. <laughs> I had no idea. It allows wow. you to easily shift your weight backwards while lifting on the handlebar grip. That way the intestines get a real good rip once you get to the large ones. <laughs> Hey, wh while we're talking about bikes, I just want to, again, we mentioned how everyone rides bikes in this, but there are so many bike chases. Like oh, yes. you normally maybe have like a car chase or something, but it's all on BMX bikes. But and they're intense. But they're really yeah, they're intense. Good. They're strangely thrilling. But everyone's on a fucking bicycle. It's like great. even Indiana Jones, the Frederick the <laughs> <Yeah>. Arm Wrestler, <laughs> and his gang are riding bicycles. <laughs> He's got a little flag in the back of his. <laughs> yeah, and a sidecar or like a <laughs> like a cart. Yeah, it's so great. <laughs> <laughs> Good way to keep the budget down, too. You don't have to build a bunch of, you know, Mad Max-style cars or anything. Just mm -hmm. build That's a bunch true. of Mad Max-style bikes. So, at this point, like, this is where Skeletron confronts... Everybody kind of gets to the robot graveyard at the same time. And uh, Skeletron has a little tussle with Turbo Kid and Apple. And poor Apple ends up losing her head. Literally. Literally. Like, her head flies up. A Apple gets... Just the crap kicked out of her through the whole movie. And she's still smiling. You could make it a drinking game. Every time she gets, like, hurt or you think she's dead, yeah. you could you could oh, yeah. drink. So Turbo Kid <laughs> jumps to catch her head and falls into the robot graveyard, which is, like, kind of poisonous, too, right? It's right it's up by, like, like, a poisonous mist. The other thing you could make a drinking <laughs> game out of is how many times Turbo Kid passes out in this movie. God, oh, God. yep. And, and every time he passes out, we get a flashback of him as a child watching his parents be murdered by Zeus. Yep. So you've yeah. got that connection. I, I liked the flashbacks quite a bit. I thought they were pretty clever. They slowly built on each other yeah. and mm -hmm. on the story, and eventually you start seeing little things like Turbo Kid carries around a hammer, and then at some point you see one of his family members was using a hammer as a weapon. And like It slowly kind of builds, but it doesn't shove it in your face or anything. It was it was pretty Pretty well done, I thought. Yeah, yeah I and agree. He, his mom, his mom is a badass. She had a crossbow, took out Zeus's eye. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, his father, maybe not so much. He gets chopped to bits by Skeletron. So he does. But I do like in yeah. how uh, Zeus, as Skeletron, well, Skeletron is going to drown the dad in a barrel, <laughs> and mm -hmm. Zeus points out how he's got nobody, fresh water. They, nobody gets a drowning death in the apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> it's a luxury, he says. It's a luxury to yeah. drown. Death by drowning. It's a luxury few men can afford. I don't know if you guys caught this, but Zeus, played by Michael Ironside, always has a golf club he carries as a cane, and it is an iron. Ooh. By his side. Wow. Oh, oh look at you. Clever. There's no way that was unintentional. You just come up with that yourself? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. No, that's that's me watching the movie, going, "Wait a minute!" And uh, you know, and I, I really hope that Michael Ironside listens to this episode and hasn't thought of that, and it's just <laughs> wait like, a minute. wait a second. It's genius. Mr. Ironside, if you're listening, please email us and let us know your thoughts. <laughs> he's he, he's he's not. That's bmoviemania podcast at gmail dot com. Well, he, hey, he's not, Michael. Even if you're not. If you're not Michael Ironside, you should still email us and let us know what you think. All right, uh, Michael Ironside's assistant, please tweet back at us because we will tag you. <laughs> we'll do a whole Michael Ironside spinoff podcast. <laughs> okay, on it. You could have a pretty good podcast with that. Hudson's That'd already picked fucking two Ironside movies. Of course, there's going to be a third next season. I mean, <laughs> what would that podcast be called? The man oh. in the Ironside. I don't yeah, know. the Ironsides. Uh, Pod. Sides of iron. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a theme song. <laughs> so hey, so so let's talk about how how Turbo Kid brings Apple back back. Really, I guess. Duct tape, he just baby. Finds a bunch a bunch of robot bodies just lying in the fucking pile. Duct tapes her head right on top of one. <laughs> yeah. And then passes out and again. And then passes out again. He passes we out. got to get that last final then the flashback. the flashback. <laughs> yeah. But it's great because he's saved by Frederick. And I thought that this was maybe like, what the fuck is Frederick doing at the robot cemetery? But they explain everything. That he yeah. just needed a new fucking hand. Yeah. And he got a robot hand. He has a robot hand now. Yeah, move over, Jamie Lannister. This guy's fucking <laughs> badass as hell. <laughs> 
It's also nice that uh, Apple wakes up and really loves her new dress. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> <That's> so good. <laughs> Holy shit. It's so fun. Oh, my God. I loved it. <laughs> I love that dress. And her new body is pretty much the exact same body as her old one, so that worked out well. <laughs> they did a really good a job of making her new body look like her old body. It was interesting that they were able to pull that off. No, you're right. It probably was the exact same friendship model, and it just it yeah. worked out like that. Well, yeah, but by, by chance, you know. And then the, but the, I think the practical effects team did a really good job at making it look the same. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's her same body. <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> okay. That's fine. It's movie magic. <laughs> she loves her dress and then is like, oh shit, I gotta go. So she leaves and then comes back for this unicorn head, <laughs> which comes into <laughs> glorious use later. Yeah, that will pay off big later. Right. Oh, yeah. So Frederick Frederick gets a hold of uh, the kid. He's in his cart, which we mentioned oh, earlier on his bike. Don't forget, he's, he's got a turbo mega blaster on his bike yeah, now. Th- they're going to they're gonna <clears throat> try to blow up Zeus. Well, not just that, Jay. They're going to shove that thing so far up Zeus's ass, he's going to taste his own shit. <laughs> yeah, Frederick has so many good lines. He's, he, I think he's the only character who swears, and he swears a lot. A lot. <laughs> it's, it's fucking amazing. There were a couple instances where I thought that they left a couple funny lines on the table, you know, and, and there were a couple missed opportunities here and there throughout the film. Well, we should hit him up for the punch-up on Turbo Kid 2, Paul. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of Frederick being a crass motherfucker, at, when, if, right before he gets caught, like we mentioned earlier, he 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 walks away from his gang and just starts taking a piss, <laughs> and so so someone joins him and starts peeing with him, and that's when the when when Skeletron shows up behind them and just fucking shoots a chain or uh, his his buzzsaw into the other guy's back, and and at that point we've seen blood spraying everywhere throughout this film, but at this point we get a real solid stream of piss just going everywhere, <laughs> along with blood. It reminds me a lot of uh, Mike when your roommate Chris, who's been on the show, yeah, told yeah. me the story of you trying to take a pee when you were really drunk and falling down. I imagine it looked just like that. <laughs> Buzz saw uh, and everything. Yeah, yeah, no, but the stream just whoop up in the air. <laughs> oh shit! But, you get a nice like two or three seconds of just fountain, golden fountain, oh, yeah. right in the air. I but I, I forget exactly what Frederick says, so please edit in right here that clip because he turn takes his time and puts his dick away slowly as he's turning around. Just says something fucking dope ass one liner right there before he like beats the fuck out of people. And here it is. What a cheap move. So that was uh, probably kind of the first big fight scene, and now we're kind of coming up to the end with the super mega blaster, and there's Skeletron yeah. waiting for him again, and it's just Frederick and and Turbo Kid at this point against a bunch and of dudes against a bunch of dudes, one of which has fucking hammer chucks. <laughs> yes, yeah, nunchuck does. hammers. It's pretty great. There's a lot of really cool weapons in this scene. Oh my god. And Skeletron's all over it, and Zeus gets shot with a turbo blaster, or the turbo glove. Doesn't explode, though, for some reason. Hmm. Big reveal. Yeah. Big reveal. But first, we gotta get Skeletron's death. We gotta talk about... Well, there are a few deaths you have to talk about. I think we talked about the torsos and the legs flailing, right? Yeah, they're four bodies stacked on top of each other. (laughs) It's It's standing. Oh, dude, the jaw. Can can we talk about the jaw? (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like... Frederick is fighting a guy at one point and just grabs the dude's jaw, rips it off of his face, and then rams the jaw into the rest of the other guy, the guy's face. So he pulls the jaw off and rams it into the upper part of his head. It was just like so That's nasty. That's probably like the goriest part yeah, of the movie. Yeah, it was. It's pretty intense. Jay, Jay though, you seem to have a bit of a, a jaw fetish. Is that is that something that's safe to say? Uh, yeah, I'd say, I think that's safe to say. Okay, just curious. We'll just we'll let people wonder about that. But, yeah. And here's where uh, Turbo Kid is. Uh, well, his Turbo Glove is out of juice after exploding a couple guys, if I remember right. And he's yep. fighting this badass chick. And here's where we see Apple and her unicorn bike come yes. and save the day. And, and when she comes back, she like you know stabs unicorn, you know abominable Doctor Five style, uh, right in right hey, into this no, chick's no back. No spoilers. We got that coming up still. Abominable Doctor Fives for for the marathon. Yeah. Oh, have you got? No, I'm sorry. Oh, I thought everyone had seen Mike. that classic. Uh, it's no. not. <laughs> you'll figure it out. <clears throat> I mean, um, I've heard I've heard the but, I've heard the Misfits song. She stabs a 
the, a woman who is choking Turbo Kid to death. <laughs> and then Turbo Kid's amazed to see her alive. And then we have this dialogue that happens. Oh, am I putting that in right here? Y- you <laughs> might want to. Or I'll act it out for you, Paul. I'll act it out right now. Okay, too. all right. Cool. All yeah, right. do it. You didn't wait for me. I, I, I thought you were dead. No, I mean to start the fight. <laughs> yep. She's pissed because she wasn't in the whole fight. It's so good. <laughs> and, and Apple brings him back the Turbo Glove, which which he left at the uh, oh, Rebel Graveyard. Oh, that's why he didn't have so, the Turbo So glove. he's that's been fighting right. without it. That's what's been going on, yeah. But hey, let's talk about Skeletron's sad, sad ending. Oh. Stabbed with a patio umbrella. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, what? sorry. Stabbed maybe does not it does not give the right the right feel to that. More like impaled, impaled. by a patio umbrella. Over the course of like forty five seconds, slowly <laughs> opens the umbrella, <laughs> which which doesn't push him off of the umbrella. No, like you might think it would. <laughs> it just explodes him. It makes him explode. Yeah, he, he gets yeah. impaled. Kid opens up the umbrella and Skeletron. <laughs> But it pretty much blows up. <laughs> I yeah. love this. You see, you see Skeletron's little like body parts and bits and mask fly off, like off the <laughs> on on the ground. <laughs> it's perfect clear blue sky right there. But they cut back to Turbo Kid and Apple raining blood everywhere, <laughs> and they're yeah. using the umbrella to shield themselves <laughs> yeah. as they finally kiss, which they've it been is, trying to do the whole movie. It's beautiful, fucking perfect. It's it beautiful. is fucking perfect. <laughs> Such but a they moment. still have. His blood all over them. I they mean, do. they're making out with lots of sure. his blood. Yeah. Yeah. A little coppery, whatever. Man, he he's just been he's been just been drinking a lot of that water. Hey, his, his blood is eighty three percent water. So, <laughs> oh god. True. And now we get possibly the biggest reveal of the movie. Oh yeah, yeah. the biggest surprise. Zeus. Definitely, he's a robot. Specifically, he's like dun, dun, he, dun. Like a, a, a corporate business policy model? robot. A cor- he's a, a corporate, corporate policy, policy robot. robot. A CC-111 corporate companion. Nice. I am a CC-111 corporate companion designed to create and instigate corporate policy fashioned in the likeness of my master. He said to me, just before I bashed his head in with his own golf cup. Remember, you're only a robot. Only a robot. And Apple knew and didn't realize that Turbo Kid didn't know, but Apple yeah. knew about Whoops. it already. Yeah, 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 that was funny. Like, they're talking about <laughs> that, and Turbo Kid is, is blown away by this, and Apple's like, what, you didn't know? <laughs> yeah, now what I like most about these about these corporate companion HR bots is they can breathe fire like a dragon. (laughs) (laughs) So Michael Ironside kills everybody and movie's over. Almost exactly opposite of that. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just doing my super. (laughs) He just kicks the super mega blaster at the flame breathing corporate Michael Ironside. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, the, the, his his flame lightning breath thing yeah. actually charges up the turbo glove. Yeah, yeah. which has been oh, a thing what, yeah. throughout the movie. I don't know how much we've mentioned it, but it, he's able to use it for a few shots, and then it has to charge up again. Yeah. So it's it, not like a it, super it weapon. Loses, it loses power at the speed of plot. Yes. Yeah, it, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's a good way to describe it. Speaking of sad parts, Chris, if you're sad, the movie's almost over. Then yeah. what about being sad be- about what happens to Apple? Apple. Apple gives her robotic life to save Turbo Kid from the massive Zeus yeah. explosion. She finally really dies. <sighs> yep. I did good, Turbo Kid. <laughs> and when you watch the sky at night, I'll be there. You think she'll be back for the sequel? Yeah. I'm, I'm almost positive. <laughs> That she will. We've seen the prequel. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, maybe she'll just be a different model of the uh, friendship bot. Yeah. I think it's actually a smart move, though, because, yeah. you know, if the sequel comes out in two years from now, cool, bring her back. But if it turns into one of these things where they do a sequel like 15 years from now or 20 mm. years from now, and because she's a robot, she doesn't look the same. Then you, you know, well, she's dead, so you don't have to bring her back if you don't want well, to. It has been announced. I mean, the sequel yeah. supposedly is happening. 
You know what I would really like to see is a reverse Terminator thing where Apple comes back, but she's really the villain. Oh, Ooh. interesting. Yeah. What would you guys say is the lesson of Turbo Kid? Oh, that's a good question. Well, there is a right answer, Mike. Stay hydrated. That's good, but not quite. Obey the rules of the wasteland. Close, oh, yeah. yeah, getting there, getting there. Um, all right, here's my take at it. Uh, be cool to your friends. <laughs> oh, so so Mike, Wait, you're saying what? be no, that's a laugh. Mike, Mike, you're saying be excellent to each other. <laughs> no, that's a whole different thing. That's a oh, different shit. movie. You no, guys are yeah, missing because, one major one major oh. lesson from this movie. Oh. Eyes, throat, genitals. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Eyes, throat, genitals. So, strike first. Always surprise your enemy. Strike hard. Always remember the weak points of the human body. Eyes, throat, genitals. Okay. My last little interesting fact I learned uh, that Monroe, who's the actor who plays uh, the kid in the film, uh, they had set up a whole day for auditions in Toronto to see, you know, to get actors to come in and audition for his role. He was literally the first person that came in, and they were so blown away. They just sat there and watched everyone else and went, ah, we already got him, sorry. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> like, they lucked out, but that's kind of a weird situation you to know, be in. <laughs> I, I hear that happened to George Lucas when casting for young Anakin Skywalker. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, Jake Lloyd. I know you're listening. Please uh, write us an email. Give us a five-star review. <laughs> <laughs> what about more bike facts? I've only gotten like one or two bike facts here. Oh, you've only got one. I'll give you another bike fact. <laughs> a bike fact. <laughs> ring, ring. <laughs> BMX originated in the late 1960s in Southern California. BMX was invented at the height of the popularity of motocross, a form of off-road motorcycling. As a result, the youth seeking to imitate motocross styles and wanting to come close to death just like their, their fathers <laughs> would ride and race these push bikes. What? <laughs> I'm just I'm just reading the out of the encyclopedias here, Paul. And that to me sounds like it's rating time. Rating time. All right. Well, Mike, because oh, fuck what I I love making your life difficult when you make the rating graphics. Now we didn't really talk about this in the uh, in the discussion, but one of my favorite lines from Frederick early on. Uh, Son I of would, a bitch. I would like to rate these from oh, one no. to from one to one hundred motherfucking comfort zones. <laughs> you can't just walk into a man's personal bubble. Is what? A man's personal space. The arm length radius, yeah? My motherfucking comfort zone. It's family only. <laughs> yeah, that's good. You motherfucking... <laughs> so, Mike, why don't you go first? No, why? Oh, God, I don't... Because it's Chris's podcast and he said so. I know, I know. He's making my life a living hell with motherfucking <laughs> comfort zones. And I have to break this first. Fuck, dude. This, this movie is fucking good. And I don't under I don't I don't understand someone not liking it. Maybe maybe the gore is a little much. But there's a lot of heart in this film, and there's this borderline it runs. This this film made me when you first announced it, Chris. I was like, ah, it's not really a B movie, right? But like homage. <laughs> oh, but totally. it is. No, it is right. Like yeah, <laughs> like it, it's a low budget. It's a whole thing. Like it is, but it's so well done. And even if it's referential, it doesn't matter because it's so fucking good. I don't, I don't, I just do it. Hundred, fuck it. This movie's so fucking good. Oh, I don't, holy shit! I don't know oh, how you wouldn't God. like it. I don't yeah. understand. I, I think my dad would love this movie. My mom would even like this movie. I think like it's fucking like, and they are people who have like totally different things than I do. Uh, I and think I, I, it would be pushing it for your mom. Well, the gore would be a little bit with her, with her. But hey, we've watched some movies recently, and you know she was into it. Maybe oh, she okay. said the word, heard the word "fuck" too much, but the big six she she cried at. So I mean. Wow, a one, another 100. Yeah, fuck it. I, I can't, I don't, I don't know. I know <laughs> I've already given 100 this season, and I saw this is why I'm feeling weird about this. But, like, I can't imagine not liking this movie. It's fucking really good and really fun. And the amount of, of what they pulled off of what they had for this is so unbelievable. It's fucking amazing. It's, it's fantastic. Well said. All right, Paul. 
Well, Your yeah, thoughts. I mean, just just to piggyback off of what what Mike said there, I think as filmmakers ourselves, we have dabbled. You know, when you see something like this, you really appreciate the effort and the care that goes into making something like this work. When you know that there's not a lot of money involved, you know that they're working under difficult con- conditions and they're just making it, you know, they're making something special. Um, so yeah, there's really not much to to not like. I mean, I mentioned a couple nitpicky things, but overall I really liked it. I'm going to go 80 motherfucking comfort zones. Paul's <laughs> hard to impress. <laughs> wow, Paul. <laughs> that's an 8 out of 10, essentially. That's You're giving not it a bad. B? No, no, that's yeah. good. That's good. All right, Jay. Uh, okay, I'm going to piggyback off of Paul piggybacking off of Mike, just oh, like that boy. torso. <laughs> it's guy. like the torso. It's more like the torso <laughs> guy <laughs> in the end of the we film. We, did, we totally forgot to talk about the whole torso stacking. <laughs> when he finally gets the power glove. There's like eight bodies stacked yeah. on top of one guy. And, one and Chris over. on the bottom, like yep. just sort of trying to feel it out somehow. Yeah. Like, where am I? <laughs> yeah. Um, this I would say this is one of the most rewatchable movies that we've done this season. Or maybe just on the podcast ever. I feel like this one is easier to revisit and have fun with the more times you go through it. And one thing that really impressed me was the, like I said earlier, the production design and the way they designed the world with what they had. There's wor- there's depth there in the world that they've created, and everything is explained, and they just did a great job with the construction of that. And I really appreciated that. So I'm going to give it 93. Nice. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Well, I thought this was great. Very nice. Well, Jay, I just really want to piggyback off of you, piggyback, piggybacking off of Paul, who piggybacked <laughs> off of Mike, that uh, I agree with everything you guys said. I mean, you can tell there was a lot of care put into this movie. Everyone, nobody phoned it in, even Michael Ironside, the bit, probably the only recognizable name, unless you're really into Canadian teen dramas, that anyone would recognize. <laughs> <laughs> Even he, like you could tell, he even cared about like his part and his role. He did a fantastic job, and everyone did. And even the Blood Brothers with their gore, a lot of thought was put into <laughs> so much blood spraying everywhere. It's not easy to keep that stuff from freezing, like Mike said. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go between Mike and Paul here. I'm gonna give it 90 motherfucking comfort zones. There you go. Okay, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. this is this one of the highest rated. It's up there. It's got to be yeah. up there. Yeah. But I agree, Chris, a little bit with like. I wouldn't say it's forgettable, but it didn't give me the B movie feels in the same way that like a forge- uh, a fateful findings or a big money rustlers or something like that. Where at the end of it, you're just like, holy fuck! <laughs> like there wasn't the normal amount of pain you associate with uh, no it's right. a B movie. So enjoyable. <laughs> wait, wait, why am I not suffering? <laughs> no, it really is a, a great B movie, and kudos to the filmmakers for pulling it off. All right, Paul, did the filmmakers of your next pick pull it off? Oh, no, they did not. (laughs) No. (laughs) On the next episode of B-Movie Mania... Let's take a little road trip and go back to school, even if it's just for one night. Let's enter a world of math and magic. A town where combat is commonplace and nothing is quite what it seems in the land of college profits. Oh my oh, god. No. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yep, that's the reaction I wanted. Paul, did you notice? There's no reaction from here because I have oh. no idea what you're talking you've about. You've seen it, Chris. <laughs> yeah, Why you've have seen I? it. Oh my god, it must have been so bad. It was I the same about night that we watched F- a fish story. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember? It's, like, you got- it's Mortal Kombat on a college campus with shot on like a handy cam. Oh shit! Oh my god, no! <laughs> no! Oh my god, Paul, can we can we just watch a fish story instead? No. That movie no, awesome. No, no fish Paul story. This, I am so excited for this. <laughs> Sweet. Where is the stream? You know, Paul. I got into that mythos, Paul. <laughs> oh, my it is god. available for free for anyone to watch on YouTube. Now I know why you said you said you waited a year for this. I did. 
I picked this movie a year ago. I'm like, you know what I'm going to do for season two? Fucking Land of College Profits. Let's get the well that eats fucking children on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, Paul, what are you doing to my motherfucking comfort zone? <laughs> Listen up, maniacs. Do you have a question or a comment? Would you like to uh, send some bourbon to Uncle Lloydy? You can contact the gang on Facebook at B Movie Mania. You can also drop them a line at bmoviemania.com. Reach out, touch them. They are touching themselves, and they might just reach back. I'm Lloyd Kaufman saying, see you next time on B Movie Mania. Woohoo! Thanks for listening to another episode of B Movie Mania. I hope you had fun, and please, don't forget to leave us a five-star review and buy a t-shirt from bmoviemania.com. And remember, eyes, throat, genitals. Eyes, throat, genitals. Eyes, throat, genitals. Why didn't eyes, we throat, say genitals. that? Why didn't we all eyes, say throat, eyes, throat, genitals. throat, genitals instead of B-Movie Mania in the beginning? Let's do it right now. It's not too late. Right. Yeah. Eyes, throat, throat genitals. genitals.